Welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to be exploring Saddlebrook 1 and 2. If you enjoy today's content, be sure to subscribe as we'll soon be covering Tucson's other Robson communities, the preserve at Saddlebrook, Saddlebrook Ranch, and Quail Creek. If you're looking for a resort-style community just 10 minutes from Catalina State Park, boasting eight trailheads and stunning natural beauty, or if you prefer convenient access to shopping and restaurants at Oro Valley Marketplace, complete with loop access and ample parking, then Saddlebrook might be the perfect fit for you. Saddlebrook locations are Robson Resort-style communities. Saddlebrook 1 and 2 and the new preserve are located just north of Catalina, Arizona. One of the most frequent topics when discussing Saddlebrook is its location. Here from above, looking north, you can see Tucson, Oro Valley, Catalina, then Saddlebrook. As mentioned earlier, the Oro Valley Marketplace is the closest major shopping center to Saddlebrook, though the Golder Ranch Plaza does offer some closer convenience with groceries with Bash's Supermarket, but more on that later. Before we take a look around, I'll linger a bit further on Saddlebrook's location and associations. When people are considering Saddlebrook, they generally think of it as one association. Saddlebrook is actually two sister associations, with the new preserve being a member of SB2. The main differences between Saddlebrook 1, 2, and the preserve are size, age, and amenities. One of my favorite things to do is step into the Google Earth time machine and watch the progression of developments. You can see here the first stage of development and the original Saddlebrook being built around what's now the center of each association. Zooming out, here is a map overlay of the second stage of development, also known as Saddlebrook Association 2, with the preserve being the newest addition, with home sites still available. The relationships between the associations are a bit complex. Having evolved over time, it is important to understand them when choosing a home in Saddlebrook. But let's take a look around before we cover those in more detail. The home styles in Saddlebrook are various. You can see homes with brick paver driveways and pitched clay tile roofs next to a more Santa Fe inspired flat roof home. The curb appeal is never lacking in Saddlebrook. And as you can see, the flora and fauna is quite abundant, and some homes do have a bit more of a sophisticated landscape design. Here's a beautiful, white, two-story home with an epoxy-finished driveway next to a lovely, southwest-toned house with a decorative garage portico and showing off with its healthy, mature, Desert Museum Palo Verde tree. Saddlebrook is nestled in the northwestern foothills of the Santa Catalina mountain range. Saddlebrook and much of northern Tucson and Oro Valley lies in the foothills of our many mountain ranges, which the topography affords many gradual sloping ridge lines, lending to many homes, having the benefit of having both views and privacy, as you can see here. Saddlebrook 1 has 2,060 homes, while Saddlebrook 2 consists of around 3,293 homes, including the preserve. Edward J. Robson, a former Marine and the founder of Robson Communities, started his civilian career as a broker at Coldwell Banker, eventually becoming a top developer for Dell Webb, then moving on to founding his first active adult community, Sun Lakes, in 1972. With his successful first venture, he continued his development career, eventually purchasing the initial 1,200-acre plot in Saddlebrook, breaking ground in 1987, a small seed which has now grown into over 5,000 350 homes and approximately 8,500 residents. Saddlebrook seamlessly blends luxury with nature, with 26 miles of meticulously planned private roads that wind through the landscape, guiding residents in an environment where sophistication meets the tranquil beauty of abundant wildlife. Now, I did take that description directly from Saddlebrook One's website, but I can attest that the roads are very well maintained. Just yesterday, I was providing a tour of Saddlebrook, including the various clubhouses and community centers. We noticed some chip sealing being performed throughout the neighborhoods, and I took a photo of one of the community boards that showed the plans and stages of the work being performed. The heat in Southern Arizona does expedite wear and tear on our roads. Living in a private community with private roads does have the benefit of road maintenance being a top priority. In the driving tour clip you're seeing now, you can see the majority of the cracks have been filled in, will now transition to one of the roads that has been recently chip sealed. I did mention the heat just a moment ago. It is somewhat common knowledge that Tucson and its surrounding cities does trend a few degrees cooler than Phoenix. According to the data, which I'll quote now, Phoenix is usually hotter than Tucson, Arizona because of its lower elevation and latitude. Phoenix is about 1,100 feet above sea level, while Tucson is 2,500 to 3,300 feet above sea level. Phoenix's average high temperature is 86.6 degrees Fahrenheit, while Tucson's is 83.1 degrees Fahrenheit. However, Tucson can be warmer than Phoenix in late fall and early winter, when 58 days a year, Tucson's record high is higher than Phoenix's. 
It is also said that due to Saddlebrook's elevation set at nearly 3,500 feet, 200 feet higher than Tucson's high of 3,300 feet, that Saddlebrook is a perfect haven offering cooler summers, which creates an ideal backdrop for year-round golf and outdoor activities. Here's a direct comparison of current temperatures as I edit this portion of the video. Phoenix is 102, Tucson is 96, and Saddlebrook is a few degrees cooler at 93. These are mid-August temperatures, by the way. While we're hovering, you can again see the variety of home styles in Saddlebrook, with most homes having a masonry partition wall enclosing the yards, some offering their own private pools, and homes ranging in size from just over 1,300 square feet up to a few as large as over 4,000 square feet. Home prices in Saddlebrook, based on the past 12 months, range from $280,000 to over $1.5 million. Here is the overall average and median data pulled from all of Saddlebrook. The average home has two to three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and is around 21 to 2300 square feet. The previous data was from the past year's sales in all of Saddlebrook. Between August 2023 and August 2024, there was exactly 300 homes sold. Here is some data moving closer to the median price range. You can see here the chart of all homes in the past 12 months that have sold for $500,000 or under. So if you're looking to protect your retirement savings and enjoy everything Saddlebrook has to offer, there are plenty home options awaiting your consideration. One last glance at home prices before we move on. In the past 12 months, from the production of this video in 2024, there has been 49 homes sold for $400,000 or less. That is one out of every six homes sold in Saddlebrook. The national median home price in the United States as of July 23, 2024 was $426,900. Here's some wildlife grazing in front of this home, a site not uncommon in Saddlebrook. Now, let's finally take a look around the various association clubhouses. Much of the footage you're about to see was actually taken some time ago for someone interested in seeing what Saddlebrook had to offer. I've since purchased better equipment, but the following footage does well enough to showcase the clubhouse. Here we are at the Saddlebrook One Clubhouse. As much as I would have loved to show you every room, like the cozy library to the left here, I do try my best to respect people's privacy. You can see what time of year I was able to film with lovely holiday decorations throughout. There is a cozy fireplace, and I would like to thank the staff again for this perfectly timed reveal of the stunning mountain views they provided me. It made for a really cool shot. This is the main dining and lounge area of the Vistas Restaurant and Agave Lounge. As you can see, dining in the Vistas features a panoramic view of the Santa Catalina Mountains, the perfect backdrop for nightly dining or a special celebration dinner. Several times each month, the best entertainment in Tucson performs in this venue. Chef Dylan Carruthers presents a menu changing quarterly, along with weekly special features and splendid new American favorites. Dinner at the Vistas is Thursday through Saturday, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m., which is subject to change during special events. For breakfast and lunch, let's head downstairs to the newly renovated Roadrunner Grill. On our way to the grill, we'll take a quick look around the pro shop. The Saddlebrook One Golf Shop does have some varying hours depending on the season. Spring hours are 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. summer hours, 6.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. fall hours, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. winter hours, 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Here we are in the newly renovated Roadrunner Grill. The menu boasts familiar delights such as soups, salads, specialty sandwiches, and classic all-American dishes infused with a touch of Tucson's distinctive flavor. Breakfast is available Sunday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. and lunch is 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And don't forget about happy hour, which is Wednesday through Friday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Heading out back, we arrive at the newly expanded outdoor dining area. I'll zoom in real quick to show the pool area. Here's an aerial view of the back of the clubhouse that shows the pool, and here's a photo from the website. In just a moment, we'll head over to the fitness center with an additional lap pool. As we wrap up at the clubhouse, I wanted to include this shot of the practice pudding green, where you can usually see some wildlife, then we'll look south at the finishing fairway number nine. The Saddlebrook One Fitness Center is located just south of the clubhouse. It is comprised of an aerobics classroom with a floating hardwood floor. 
an equipment room with cardio and strength training machines, as well as free weight equipment. There is a dedicated stretch area with stretch bars. There are two locker rooms, each containing three showers, a sauna, and a whirlpool spa. The lap pool has four lanes dedicated to lap swimming only. And lastly, there are two massage treatment rooms located between and accessed through the locker rooms. Within Saddlebrook, residents are privileged with access to an extensive array of over 200 clubs and groups. Whether you're inclined towards artistic pursuits, exploring the outdoors with activities like hiking and four-wheel off-roading, or engaging in social card games and dance, this community has something for everyone. Here we are above the clubhouse, fitness center, arts, crafts, and gift shop, bocce ball, and tennis courts. Recently, provisions were made at the tennis complex to include court markings for the new sport of pop tennis. For those who wish to play pickleball, the Saddlebrook Pickleball Association, which is a private club, has a brand new state-of-the-art 14-court facility called the Robson Pickleball Center, or RPC, which is centrally located within the community. Memberships are easily obtained by interested players. It's important to note that the Saddlebrook Pickleball Association and RPC is a private amenity of Saddlebrook Homeowners Association number two. With privileges granted to SB1 members, Saddlebrook residents who are not members of SPA and their guests may not play at the RPC other than during Saddlebrook resident drop-in time. Just to the west, you'll see the local RV parking lot. Now let's fly on over and take a look around the Saddlebrook 2 Clubhouse, also known as Mountain View. Alright, here we are at the main Saddlebrook 2 complex. Through the main automatic sliding glass entryway, we are immediately greeted with a southwest themed foyer and casual lounging space. We'll first stroll to the right past the hydration station, which I greatly appreciated and make our way toward the Mountain View Bar and Grill. The Mountain View Bar and Grill, or also referred to as the MVBG, is said to be Saddlebrook 2's melting pot, where neighbors and friends gather to mingle and connect while they feast on seasonal specialty dishes while enjoying a refreshing cold beer or sip a signature MVBG cocktail. At the time of filming, I did not know that the much anticipated new breakfast dining option, The Brook, was now open and is offering an enticing menu with innovative services in an inviting atmosphere. This culinary haven promises to be a catalyst for elevated dining experiences. Members can embark on a gastronomic adventure and immerse themselves in the delightful flavors, exceptional service, while enjoying the captivating ambiance that this new establishment will bring. Patrons can enjoy breathtaking panoramic views of the Santa Catalina Mountains from the restaurant windows or patio areas. Although I do love filming and providing as much information and visual details as possible, I prefer not to film people, particularly while dining, so I did not film the main dining hall. But here are some excellent photos of the views and main dining space here at Mountain View. Breakfast and lunch is served at the Brook Monday through Sunday from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. With a brief kitchen turnover, then the Mountain View Bar and Grill is open Monday through Friday from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. And I do believe that Saturday will again be available in the near future from the time this video was made. I do try to provide as much information as I can in my neighborhood and association videos, but I cannot cover everything. Both Saddlebrook 1 and 2 have excellent webmasters who constantly provide up-to-date information on their various websites. I encourage you to visit some of the links that I will be providing in the description below. Between the association's websites, club portals, and Facebook groups, you can surely immerse yourself in nearly everything this haven has to offer. If you've made it this far in the video, I wanna first thank you for sticking around. As a realtor, our job is primarily to ensure that our clients' interests are protected and that whether you are buying, selling, or both, that your needs are met with professionalism and transparency. I myself am originally from Montana and I watched a significant amount of videos on Tucson before I moved here many years ago. As a realtor, changing your city is a difficult enough proposition, leaving your area of expertise let alone another state 1,300 miles away. Choosing to move to or purchase a seasonal home in another state or town is one decision. However, choosing the right home in the right area that best fits your needs can be the most difficult. This is to say, I do understand the value in being able to get to know a new city as much as possible from the comfort of your home. That is why choosing a realtor who will be with you at every step of the process is very important. 
The value in making these kinds of videos not only benefits you, the viewer, but also myself, as it significantly increases my knowledge and expertise. Here we are outside, and just ahead is a small stage for some relaxing entertainment. We'll pan around to show the covered outdoor patio, then head over to the Arts and Crafts Center. Much like Saddlebrook One, the Arts and Crafts Center is its own nearby building, offering many different rooms and spaces for each type of project. Each area has its own unique name, like the Silicon Room here, aptly named for the Computer Club. Just a few examples as shown here are jewelry making, wood carving, silversmithing, stained glass, quilting, photography, and much more. Let's head back over to the ballroom side of the complex before we go visit the Rincon Fitness Room and the Mountain View Pro Shop. Just ahead is the Arts and Crafts Center. We'll pan to the south to see the Catalina Mountains and mosey our way back towards the main clubhouse. Here are some of the ballrooms here at Saddlebrook. The Mountain View Country Club can accommodate large events hosting up to 350 guests Saddlebrook has many ballrooms used for everything from special events, weddings, banquets, and meetings. The Saddlebrook Ballroom Dance Club is hosted in the East Ballroom and features dinner followed by dancing the night away, with formal ballroom dancing, Latin, Western, and line dance are also part of their repertoire. I should mention there are more ballrooms and venues at the Desert View Performing Arts Center that we will visit later in the video. Entering the west wing of the Mountain View Clubhouse, you can see just ahead the main foyer. To our right are some of the small meeting rooms for book clubs, playing cards, or board games. This cabinet is packed with puzzles, and there is one of the many libraries in Saddlebrook just ahead. As we start to wrap up here at Mountain View, the westernmost building is the Mountain View Golf Club and the Rincon Fitness Center, which includes one of Saddlebrook's many lap pools and SB2's main pool. As we make our way inside the Mesquite Building, you'll see just ahead is the Catalina Room, which is one of many meeting rooms available to the community. Meeting rooms vary in size with some ideal for small seminars and larger boardroom style meetings, as well as others that are more private and intimate for small gatherings. I made a bit of a figure eight through the Mesquite complex. I try to provide a flow as we tour each area so we can keep our bearings as much as possible. Let me know in the comments if you like these in-depth tours. Here to the left, you can see the outdoor patio area of the Mountain View Golf Shop and the Lynx Snack Shop. I'll make my way inside and briefly show you around. The gentleman inside kindly greeted me as I entered with my little camera in hand. No one seemed to mind, so I continued my shot without interruption. So, if you happen to watch this, thank you for allowing me to get the following footage. The Lynx is the perfect place to grab a quick bite before or after a game of golf. The snack shop is known for its new specials and snack options that cater to a wide range of tastes and dietary preferences. Whether you're in the mood for a refreshing beer, a tasty hot dog, or a savory snack, the Lynx has got you covered. With its convenient location, friendly staff, and mouth-watering snacking items, the Lynx is a must-visit destination for residents alike. During my visit, it was evidently tea time for many, so I continued on toward the Rincon Room. The Rincon Room is one of many fitness centers in Saddlebrook. The Rincon Room is used for various classes and activities, including the Saddlebrook Table Tennis Club and the Saddlebrook Easy Riders Indoor Cycling Club, which I stumbled upon here. That about wraps it up here at the beautiful Saddlebrook 2's main clubhouse. As mentioned at the beginning of this video, it was not my original intention to cover the preserve. As this video has progressed, I thought that we might as well make this the most comprehensive video on Saddlebrook 1 and 2, which wouldn't be complete without visiting the newest addition, the preserve. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Preserve Clubhouse. As you enter through the automatic sliding glass doors, you're greeted with a bit different experience than our previous association buildings. The Preserve's clubhouse's architectural style combines curves and straight lines, which could be said to be a blend of art deco and modernism. As I made my way around inside, it felt like I was in more of a resort lodge in my home state of Montana, reminiscent of something you'd experience in the Yellowstone Club, but with a flavor and tone of the Southwest, Perhaps it was the exposed wood beams and cowhide back chairs in the bar area that had me feeling this way. The preserved restaurant and the elevated bar area with its panoramic windows and skylights do feel a bit more like a restaurant experience in a resort atmosphere. Rather than having a wide open Grand Lodge feeling like Saddlebrook 1 or the more casual gathering atmosphere at Saddlebrook 2, the preserve perfectly complements and completes the spectrum of offerings at Saddlebrook. I'm really happy my camera adjusted so well to capture the outside views in this shot. 
Fine Dining at the Preserve is open for lunch from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and is open for dinner from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. The bar hours are from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's important to note that Dining at the Preserve is closed Mondays and Tuesdays at the time this video was made. With dining as spectacular as the views, renowned as one of Tucson's great dining experiences, the Preserve is acclaimed for both its distinctive menu of modern American cuisine and its setting of refined elegance with casual charm. From the relaxing lounge and the spacious covered patio to the beautiful views of the Santa Catalinas, you'll appreciate the ambiance as much as the seasonal menu changes with a blend of new and classic specialties where everyone can experience a taste of excellence at the preserve. As hard as it was to cut and edit this portion of the tour down, I did not want to make this video too long. I'll do my best to make the cuts leave us with our bearings. We'll linger a bit longer with the restaurant views as we make our way to today's third pro shop. As we exit the restaurant, we'll head down the north wing to my right. Just ahead are many more small meeting and gathering rooms, not dissimilar to those in each of the other clubhouses. Here we are inside the Preserves Golf Pro Shop. We'll take a brief look around before heading out to the patio. Towards the end of the video, I will touch on each golf course and fees. I'll also cover which are open to the public and which are only for Saddlebrooks members and guests. Making our way outside, we'll step into one of two outdoor dining and lounging spaces offered at the Preserve. One of the primary reasons I personally chose to move to the Tucson area was its proximity to the Catalina mountain range. My great grandparents settled down long ago in Catalina, Arizona. Many of my friends and colleagues could not understand my choice to move to the desert. Many people do not quite understand the life and beauty that the Sonoran desert has to offer. Other than the footage of Saddlebrook one, all footage in this video was filmed in July and August and just look how green the mountains are. With this backdrop, you can see why so many people have now chosen to call this place home. As mentioned previously, the Preserve and its members are within the Saddlebrook Two Homeowners Association. The Preserve Clubhouse does have its own pool, tennis courts, and fitness center. We will wrap up the tour portion of this video with one last stop at the Desert View Complex. Welcome to the Desert View Fitness Center at Saddlebrook 2, the Desert View Sports Club, and the Desert View Performing Arts Center. Here at the Desert View Complex, you'll find the largest of the many libraries in Saddlebrook. The Friends of Saddlebrook Libraries are rejuvenated annually with contributions of over $35,000, where you will find everything from books, magazines, DVDs, and audiobooks. The library hours are Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to noon. The library is closed on Sundays and holidays. The Desert View Fitness Center is a fully equipped cardiovascular and strength training gym with locker rooms and showers. They have Precore, Life Fitness, Paramount, Kaiser, Free Weights, Tubing Stations, and more. Their certified personal trainers are ready to teach you how to make the best use of the equipment and help you enjoy the wonderful recreational years ahead. They also offer a variety of wellness programs and group fitness, which one was in session so I did not film that room, and lastly, they offer a variety of aquatic classes. Here we are at the Desert View Performing Arts Center. The Desert View Performing Arts Center is a versatile venue that hosts a variety of live performances and events that includes theater style seating for 478. Featuring a professional sound system and coved ceilings, offering impressive views of the stage from every seat for your entertainment and enjoyment. Here are some honorable mentions before we explore some nearby attractions and shopping. The Catalina Recreation Center is a great place to play cards and is the host building for the pool players of the Brooks Billiards Club. The Catalina Recreation Center is situated at the first fairway of the Catalina course. Recreational walking of the course and pathway is permitted in the early morning and evening. The hours vary depending on the season. Saddlebrook is located in the Golder Ranch Fire District with the Golder Ranch Fire Station 372 located in the Preserve and the Golder Ranch District Station 370 situated centrally in the Saddlebrook 1 community. If you would like a recap of Saddlebrook's amenities and clubs, go ahead and hit pause on the next slides or visit the web links below. Some of the amenities I did not cover are the two basketball courts, the dog park, and the softball complex. Of the over 200 clubs in Saddlebrook, you can find many arts and crafts, service clubs, sports, athletics, and exercise, educational, singing, dancing and performing, social groups, cards and games, golf groups, religious study, support, and pet groups. As discussed at the start of this video, Saddlebrook's location often sparks conversation when comparing the various active adult communities in Tucson and its surrounding areas. Let's explore around to see what's nearby. 
First stop, let's zoom into Catalina. Catalina offers some excellent local restaurants and some familiar locations such as Bash's Supermarket at the Golder Ranch Plaza. Now let's head south past Sun City and visit the Oro Valley Marketplace. The Oro Valley Marketplace is about 15 to 20 minutes from Saddlebrook and is the closest major shopping center. The Oro Valley Marketplace is home to Walmart, Century Theaters, Chard Pie, Dollar Tree, DSW, Red Lobster, Petco, Olive Garden, Sola Salons, Ulta Beauty, and much more. The Oro Valley Marketplace is also a great place to park for access to the famous Tucson Loop. And just ahead is the Oro Valley Northwest Medical Center. If you'd like more information, please visit orovalleymarketplace.com. Heading south into Oro Valley, we arrive at the Rooney Ranch Shopping Plaza, which is about 20 minutes from Saddlebrook. Here you have Target, Home Depot, Starbucks, Dutch Bros, PetSmart, First Watch, and much more. Further south, approaching Ina Road. Here we are around 27 to 30 minutes from Saddlebrook, where we have my favorite grocery store, Sprouts, along with Whole Foods, Safeway, Home Goods, Marshalls, Goodwill, and much more. Moving on to Orange Grove, we have some more familiar locations, such as TJ Maxx, Dairy Queen, the new Redbird Restaurant, and much, much more. Overall, and depending on traffic, it takes around 30 to 40 minutes to reach northern Tucson. It's not uncommon for Tucson locals to drive anywhere from 15 to 45 minutes to get from place to place as we do not have a freeway system other than I-10. I did mention the Tucson Loop a moment ago. This too is a frequent topic when discussing Saddlebrook. As we zoom out, this pink line on the map is more or less my estimated location for what is hopefully a future extension of the Loop. I've been mapping the Loop for some time now. I will be making a more in-depth video on the Loop and its extensions in a future video, but in short, the Loop was built by and is managed by the City of Tucson and Pima County. Oro Valley has its own dedicated path system that is tied to the official Loop. This map is of the Oro Valley system. During my initial research, I noticed this dotted blue line. Looking at the legend, you can see it's labeled Paved Shared Use Path Future. At some point, they may decide to install this Oro Valley Loop extension. Fingers crossed, but as of now, the Oro Valley Marketplace is the closest loop access to Saddlebrook at this time. But I do remain hopeful as this map was published in 2022 and is still available on the city of Oro Valley's website. Saddlebrook is around 45 minutes from downtown Tucson. It's approximately 55 minutes to the airport, just over an hour and a half to the Mesa Airport, most frequently used for Allegiant Airline flights. And depending on your Phoenix destination, it's anywhere from a little over an hour to around two hours to get to Phoenix and surrounding areas. Now let's take a moment to discuss Saddlebrook and the association fees and dues. Please note that all figures discussed in this video are approximate, can vary slightly from home to home, are subject to change, and are provided for educational purposes only. It's important to discuss association fees with your realtor and have us provide you with up-to-date information on specific homes. Most master planned associations, Saddlebrook included, not only have homeowners association fees, but also have a one-time fee whenever a home in the association changes ownership. This is most often called a capital improvement fee. This fee is most often paid for by the buyer. I chose to discuss this topic here toward the end of the video after showing you everything that Saddlebrook has to offer. The one-time capital improvement fee has many benefits to the association. This fee at the time of recording this video in 2024 is on average $2,800 to $3,500 per real estate transaction. So based on the past 12 months sales data, that is approximately $1 million annually that the association is able to reinvest back into the community. You can see on your screen now where some of that money goes with this freshly chip sealed road. We've also seen in this video that there have been many updates and renovations performed on each clubhouse and the installation of new facilities such as the new Robson Pickleball Center. I also just realized I have not mentioned that Saddlebrook has its own 24 hour security and patrol service as well as a county sheriff substation. The one-time capital improvement fee is designed to help associations maintain financial stability by providing an additional funding source beyond annual dues. This fee greatly helps associations keep its monthly membership dues as low as possible. Saddlebrook's membership dues do vary depending on the size, age, and type of home. Monthly dues are on average just over $250 per month paid annually or semi-annually. Some homes start at $233 per month, while some townhomes are just under $600 per month. Now do not let that last number shock you. The townhomes in Saddlebrook are known as the villas. These townhomes have a huge benefit versus single family homes in terms of included benefits. The single family homes dues include membership and access to all of the amenities in Saddlebrook and common area and road maintenance. However, higher dues at the villas include a blanket insurance policy, common area maintenance, exterior maintenance of your unit, front yard maintenance, pest control, roof repair, and roof replacement. 
So much like a condo, all of the exterior maintenance of your home, including the roof, is taken care of by the association, including insurance. This means your home insurance fees are drastically reduced. Also, property taxes in the villas are much lower. So if having a worry-free home with minimal maintenance is important to you, do not let that higher monthly fee dissuade you from considering a villa at Saddlebrook. If you would like me to provide you with a detailed breakdown and comparison of the numbers, please feel free to reach out anytime. Hey there, Blaine Bond, Tucson, Arizona with the XP Realty. Thank you so much for making it through this whole video. If I spent any more time on this, I wouldn't get to show you around any other association in Tucson. So I'm gonna wrap it up here. I know I said I would talk about the golf. Um, in general, the golf courses, there's 57 holes. There's four total golf courses out there. Um, I think three, two or three of them are public. Uh, the other two are private. As far as yearly annual memberships, it's gonna be around 35 to $4,500 a year. That's for play any day costs. Um, if you want any more information, they do have some great information on the websites. And I didn't really focus on getting footage of the golf course itself because on their websites, they actually have excellent footage of each and every hole. And I'll provide that down in the description. Uh, that way you can go check that out. And again, thank you so much for making it towards the end of this video. If you got any value out of it, just give us an internet high five on your way out and uh, check the next video and look out for the other Robson communities in and around Tucson that I'm gonna be making some future videos on. So that wraps it up for today. Thank you so much again. Bye-bye. Buying or selling a home is one of the biggest decisions you'll ever make. That's why you need a local Tucson expert real estate partner. With all the exciting reasons you have for buying a home, one of the biggest reasons is it can dramatically increase your family's wealth. So whether you're looking to purchase your first home, your next home, a second home, an investment property, or maybe you want to sell your home, choosing an experienced real estate expert to help you will make it a smooth and easy process. And choosing the right realtor can make the difference of more money in your pocket after closing. So whether you're a first time home buyer or a seasoned investor, or maybe just interested in knowing what your home's worth, contact Tyler Ford and team today. Call Tyler Ford and team today at 520-775-3400. That's 520-775-3400.